Dear friends, dear colleagues, welcome back to the Essential of Digital Dentistry, one of the most important online projects of the Mangano Digital Academy. In this video, we will talk again about the 3D printing of zirconia. In this case, we will focus our attention on zirconia restoration because yes, it's something new, something very fascinating. The literature is scarce and we need more data, obviously, because the machines will probably spread in the next few years because printing zirconia is really a new challenge, a new, um, a new vision, a new perspective in dentistry. Digital dentistry, as I told you, is based on four steps. The first one is data acquisition, then we have data elaboration, then we have production of this data by means of milling unit, by means of 3D printer. And in this case, we talk about 3D printer, and in this case, we talk about some peculiar, I mean, application of 3D printing that is printing zirconia. And in this case, printing zirconia restoration, it is possible now we can print the Coney restoration. We can use the machine I mentioned um, in the last video, the Serafab S65 by Litos, one of the most important and most powerful machine, most accurate machine for printing zirconia and zirconia dental restoration. So the question here in this video I try to answer is what is the trueness of millet versus 3D printed zirconia crowns? And we, we published this article recently in the Journal of Dentistry in the issue of October. And we compared the trueness and precision of 3D printer versus millet monolithic zirconia crowns. How did it work, this, this study? It was so. It was an in vitro study. We had a reference model with um, this tooth number 24. We captured the whole uh, file of the model with a very powerful industrial optical scanner by GOM. Zeiss, and uh, then we obtained a reference file. And on this reference file, the dental technician modeled a, a split cast, but most important, modeled a crown. And this crown was our reference, our, our computer assisted design reference file for the study. And then this crown, this, this uh, STL file, was used to fabricate the test and the control samples. In this case, the test samples were uh, 3D printed zirconia crowns, monolithic printed with the lithography-based ceramic manufacturing technology. 10 samples we printed with the very powerful Serafab S65 by Litos using the, uh, the proprietary technology of the company. These were the tests. I, I have already mentioned the characteristic of this machine that has the potential to be a game changer in the field of dentistry, definitely because it allows us to print zirconia restoration crowns and bridges until now, and probably in the future full arches. <clears throat> For now, I have to say that uh this machine was used as a um, um, machine for fabricating the test uh, samples. And uh, the technology is a proprietary technology that um, is based on the layer by layer curing of a ceramic suspension using visible blue LED light. The ceramic suspension, in this case for the zirconia, is Lita Con 3 Y. 210 consists of 3% molar ether stabilized zirconia ceramic powder, so zirconia with photocurable resin and an additive for optimal processability. So the STL file of the crown is split in layer by the computer and projected layer by layer onto the ceramic suspension, which is hardened and cured by photopolymerization, forming the so-called green body. So the green body consists basically of the shape giving polymer together with the zirconia particles fixed and embedded within. Then after 3D printed, these green bodies undergo post-treatment. They are cleaned first when the excess material is eliminated in a cleaning station. And then most important thing, they are sintered in order to get to the final results to pure zirconium oxide in a thermal post-processing. Sintering is carried out in a uh, very powerful furnace at a very high temperature, around 1450 degrees and uh, under normal atmosphere without increased pressure. And in this way, we can obtain pure zirconia, nine, more than 19.4% of density. Sometimes more than 19.6% can be reached in this case. And this is the process of sinterization. And during this process, all the resin is eliminated and we have only zirconia now in our crowns. And the ceramic suspension is this one with these characteristics and with this density as confirmed also 
by the scanning electron microscopy we can have a very few pores inside the micro pores inside the structure but the structure is clearly very dense more than 99.6 percent and the uh, the control sample 10 crowns were made using a conventional milling unit a very powerful milling unit that i own in my office the dwx 52d by dg shape a roland company from hamamatsu japan and uh, so we had 10 samples 3d printed zirconia crowns versus uh, 10 uh, controls uh, milled crowns and then we scanned all over again and we scan the whole surface of this crown, the margin, the occlusal surface and the entire area of this crown, test and samples. And basically we had to superimpose this industrial scan over the reference file in order to understand if there were any deviation or difference between the model, the computer assisted design model and the final product, the final objects in order to understand the differences. And we use uh, three different methods, thanks to our friend uh, engineer Pranno by Rome University. Uh, we use uh, these uh, three methods to evaluate the deviation. One is the very common absolute average, the other is root mean square, and the, probably the most uh, important and significant and detailed method is this, uh, the number one here and listed in this list, 90 minus 10 method because it's uh, the more reliable to represent the final results to represent the final deviations and we uh, consider three different evaluation the wall crown the only occlusal portion and the only marginal portion that is key of course for us because obviously the margin is an area that must be absolutely precise in order to have a precise crown that fits very well that close very well in order to avoid complication like soft tissue inflammation and caries infiltration in the in the medium and, and long term so crowns must be very precise also because of the margins and this is what comes out from the study the overall trueness so the overall evaluation revealed that if you, con if you consider the world surface with the three method we see this kind of deviation and there are statistically significant differences between the 3D printed crowns and the milled crowns in terms of trueness in favor of the controls so milling is more precise milling is more accurate in this case but we have very good results despite of all also with the 3D printed uh, crowns because we have very little deviation in terms of microns so we are around 15 and 20 micron of uh, error for the millet crowns, the control, and we are completely between 25 and 35, I can say, for 3D printed crowns. So it's so not a huge difference, even if statistically significant. And uh, I could say that the overall manufacturing error with milling should not exceed 25 micron. It is a quite important study because it reveals also the limits of our machine and the potential of our machine. And if we watch the sample, uh, printed in zirconia we see that apart from the sample number three that had clearly some problem during the manufacturing process the other sample are very i mean true are very i mean predictable and we have a few problem only in the area of uh, of the not not only in the area where the supports were were made and left of course but also in the area of the fosse because it's uh, more difficult for, for um, 3D printer to reproduce this area predictably due to a phenomenon that is called hyperpolymerization. But it's not a problem here because from the clinical point of view, they look very precise. And this is what happens with the control sample. Everything is green. Green means very little deviation. Green means very high predictability. If we refer only to the occlusal evaluation, then the difference is a little bit, I mean, larger because obviously we have this problem with the fosse, with the 3D printed crowns, and we have this problem with the supports that we need to place exactly there on the occlusal surface and then to remove them. So when we remove them, we can remove in excess or leave some material there and there are deviation. Anyway, once again, Miller crowns perform better, but 3D printer crowns do not perform so bad after all. I think, I think it's, it's a totally new technology and the results are amazing anyway. Uh, usually 20, 20 microns should be the ideal manufacturing error at the occlusal level. And if we move to the uh, most important part of the study, probably, I mean, the marginal evaluation, we see that lithography-based ceramic manufacturing grant a very good result in terms of very little deviation at the margin. That means that our crowns fit very well, they close very well and they grant 
already now in 2021 an excellent performance with almost all the portion green and very little deviation. Obviously with the milling unit uh, we have a better result but if we watch overall we have very little deviation. I mean with a milling unit we are capable to, to, to have an error between 10-15 microns. It's something fantastic at the margin so nobody can say that with a milling unit, a powerful milling unit like the Roland machine we can't have a good result because the result is not good, it's excellent. Uh, despite of all, despite the, the mill accounts are more true, uh, truer and, and more, uh, more precise than the 3D printer crown, we can say that also the 3D printer crown have a, an excellent result because the error is comprised between 15 and 25. So if we watch overall, we have a very good result also for the test crown, even if statistically inferior to the, to the millet crowns. Uh, and so if we have to check, if we have to evaluate the quality of the manufacturing processes, we could say that ideally the milling should not exceed 15 micron error at the margin, but it's something that we can uh, retrieve from this study. We can gather this data from this study and it's quite important considering all. But uh, this is where the, the graphical representation, as you can see, the, at the occlusal level, the difference is higher at the margin, the difference is, uh, is not so huge, even if statistically significant, of course, uh, if we talk about the medians with the different methods, if we talk about the, the absolute mean with the medians, and if we talk also about the uh, root mean square, we see differences between the different uh, three methods used, but more or less the results are consistent. And finally, what I wanted to do, apart from this trueness evaluation, an optical industrial evaluation, I wanted to see something about the precision of these samples. So uh, we printed a spleen cast model with the different dyes and we uh, tried uh, to two experienced prostodontics tried the fit of this restoration, both 3D printed and milled restoration onto these uh, dies, onto this split cast, and they found that the precision was very high in terms of adaptation, marginal adaptation, no gap, and everything, and also the interproximal contact point were perfect. So from the clinical point of view, the two operators did not find any difference clinically uh, between the samples and the controls. So if, if, if the industrial optical scanner is so powerful that can show us the differences between this kind of restoration, our eyes are not so powerful even using a, a 4.5 pair, uh, I mean Zeiss helmet, uh, the operator cannot see in concrete differences in terms of the clinical quality, marginal fit, uh, clinical precision. And this is the result of the study. So in conclusion, millet crowns had a statistically higher trueness than 3D printed ones. But the trueness of 3D printed ones was amazing considering that five years ago it was not possible to fabricate crown with the 3D printing process. However, I have to say that both millet and 3D printed crowns showed and revealed a high marginal and interproximal precision clinically compatible, I mean with use, with no statistically significant difference. So from the side of the operator, no different from the side of the industrial optical scanner difference, but we are clinician, we are operator, what we want is a, a clinical precision and I think that with this uh, uh, 3D printed sample we can gather it without any issue. Obviously the different evaluation method determine different results but more or less in proportion with uh, the, our uh, expectations. Uh, so uh, this is the article that you can um, uh, retrieve for free from the pages of the Journal of Dentistry, the official journal of the Digital Dentistry Society International. Currently I am the editor of the Digital Dentistry section of this journal that is the most important journal in the field of digital dentistry in the world with an impact factor of 4.3 and a side score of 6.2. In this case the article is an open access so if you go to our website you can download the entire PDF of the article for free. So uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.